Hey, Ezron. You're licking me. Oh, you're so cute. Today we are going to meet a special forces team, affectionately known by my South African friend Christine from the Touch Alive video as the Reds. Morning coffee sorted, iced cappuccino, which is $1.30, so less than a pound for a nice iced coffee. And today we are gonna go and see some special forces rats and if you have no idea what a special forces rat is i'm about to let you know don't tempt me satan stick into noodles so we've made it here to the visitor center but i thought it's important to let you know why the special crack team of rats is necessary um so far in this series of videos i haven't touched on the dark past of Cambodia. They went through quite possibly the most horrific genocide in recent times. From 1975 to 1979, the country was really in a terrible state, but that's all we're gonna to touch on it because I feel like it needs a delicate hand for a filmmaker to uh, approach that story and I do not yet have a delicate hand. It's possible that we may do a video about it and the improvements since that time. If you speak to anybody here, everyone is relentlessly positive about where Cambodia's come from, where it's going and how well and how quickly things are improving here. However, the repercussions from that time period in the country are the reason that this special crack team are still necessary. By giving you a brief information about our organization first. So, APOPO is a non profit organization, and APOPO is an acronym of Dutch word as well. In English, it means anti personal landmine removal product development. We came to Cambodia in 2014 and started working with the RAD first day in the field in 2016. We also working with the government as well. You can see we have a corporation and we have a logo of the government on my shirt as well. We train African giant pouch RAD to detect four things right now. The first one is TNT explosive powder. You know about TNT, right? Yeah, the second one is tuberculosis or TB. Have you heard about it? And the third one is pangolin animal. You heard about pangolin? The animal that have a scale and they like to roll their body around. Because you know this animal known as the most trafficking animal in the world right now because they believe that their scale known as the medicine as well. That's why they are legally, trans illegally transferred around the world right now. And the number four is using them to find survivor under the building from earthquake, something like that. They can live up to eight years and they are originally from Tanzania. It takes us nine months to one year to train one of them. And after they finish their training, you can see on the board over there, the last step, graduation hat. Yeah, which means that they also graduation ceremony as well. Throwing the hat in the sky at night, have a cheese party with their boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, right now we have 43 red in total. And we have a retired red as well, you know. And many people, they ask us like, uh, do we kill the retired one? No, it's not respectful to kill them as well. We have to give them a better life until yeah, they pass away on their own. We don't have any certain age that they should retire, but it depends on their performance only. Yeah, if, if, they if their scent of spell start to drop down, and if they look like a yummy cat with no fur, yeah, retire rat. In terms of the training the rats, how do they know that they've done a good job? Do they, like you would train a dog, you give them a treat if he's done a good job? Do you do the same thing yeah. with the rats? Yeah, clicker and treat, clicker and yeah, treat yeah, yeah. reward. And then they also get to take their final exam as well. We have the rat, they are, they are like, um, if we say lower standard, it's a little bit rude for them, but I don't know how to find another word to describe it. But it's like sometimes they are low, they are slow, lower than what we want. So that's why we need to take them to demonstration here. And then, yeah, it is also retraining for the hero red as well. Yeah, you can, can you find four out of four? Yeah. yeah, so we have four different types of landmine and bomb that we choose to show you as well. So how many landmines that you found here and how many bombs that you found? Can you divide which one is landmine, which one is bomb? We have three landmine, one bomb. These three here is landmine, that one is a bomb, yeah. 
So every landmine will plant one by one as well. And I forget to tell you that no rats ever die in the field as well because Never. they are not heavy enough to explode landmine and bomb as well. So many people, they ask, does rat ever die? No. So this one here we call tripwire landmine, right over here. Yes, so tripwire here is a landmine where they plant one by one by hand in the forest. They hide it behind the trees or behind the rock or sometimes they wrap it around the trees like this or sometimes they put it on top of the tree as well. So they connect the wire downward like that. So when animals or humans crossing this wire, the pin or the fuse of it will pop out and the body will jump up on this high and it will explode as well. So when this one explodes, it can affect us. This fragmentation can spread around 200 meters as well. But if the fire can spread only 15 meters around, or if people stay only half of the meter or one meter away, they cannot survive from the explosion of this thing because the fragmentation from that one will aiming to cut the body and also this one they explode as fire. So the fire will burn human body. And we also used to interview one of a man in the countryside. He told our team that he got blind one eye because of the fragmentation from that one as well. He stayed away 150 meters away, but somehow this small fragmentation hit his eye about 40 years ago. So he got blind because of that one, and he never get a chance to see development as well. Not one eye, I mean two eyes, yeah. Okay, so both of the eyes. And this one, we call anti-personal landmine, or PM2, or we can say plastic mine as well. This one, they plant one by one by hand, 10 centimeter under the ground. And that one, they need about three to five kilogram pressure or around 10 pounds pressure to step on it and cause an explosion as well. Sometimes vibrations can cause an explosion as well. While I mean vibrations, I mean by landmine is here, but those humans step like 10 centimeter away, so the vibrations can be reached to the landmine and it will explode immediately as well. So in many movies in the, uh, in the movie industry, when people step on landmine, they say, oh, I step on landmine, and you will hear the click sound from it as well. But if they stand still like that, it will cause no explosion. But if they take their feet away, boom. But this one, no. The moment they step on it, the moment it explodes and cut off the leg immediately. So when they go to the hospital, they need to amputate their two legs, sometimes only one, sometimes only half as well. So if the plastic mine is small this size, it's not going to uh, destroy the leg, but it's going to destroy the feet only as well. This one known as the most common one, and this one, it has metal pin inside, so metal detector steel can detect this one. This one is a bomb we call mortar or UXO. So some of them, they drop from the plane, and some of them, they put on the shoulder and they shoot out. Some of them, they put in the cannon on the ground and they shoot out as well. That one, the shape and size like this, is really popular and attractive for children in Cambodia right now as well. You can see the back part right here, yeah, it looks like an airplane wings of toys. So sometimes children in the countryside, they don't know what it is. So sometimes they try to pick it up and then they throw it with each other. There's also a young student about um, one month ago, he, he came with his friend and he wants to do a tour, but we don't charge any fee from him as well because he is a primary school student. So yeah, he came here, we give him a free of charge. So when he came here, he told me that his friend, a group of them, five, uh, five of his friends got severe injured because of that one. They tried to play with this one. They tried to pick it up and then throw it and it explodes. So five of them got severe injured as well. When this one explodes, it will affect 25 to 35 meters around. you have any questions so far? Yes? Are most of the mines from the time of the Khmer Rouge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Most are there, of the mines. Are there some? I didn't realize that during the Vietnam War, Cambodia was involved until I read that. The bomb. Sign, to be honest. Yeah, the bomb. <laughs> so that's that's all bombs, not. Yeah, the that's US. all bomb. For the Vietnam War, we uh, <coughs> we involved with the bomb. So for Khmer Rouge, landmine and bomb at the same time. If we go to uh, the part near Vietnamese border, we found mostly bomb. This one. The most powerful landmines that we found right now, we call anti-tank mine. This one is aiming for a big tank, but sometimes it's aiming for human as well. This one, they need about 100 kilograms or 220 pounds pressure to cause an explosion as well. If one tank step on one of these, it's not going to destroy a tank 100%. 
but it's going to destroy the machine of the tank to stop the machine only. So sometimes they also bury three of them on top of each other. So one tank step on three of them, you will imagine what happened. Three of them is quite really powerful because this one, only one of them, it can spread about 200 to 300 meters around as well. This one, they also contain six kilograms of TNT powder. We got a case of a man, he used a tractor and he accidentally stepped on one of these. We cannot find his body at all and the tractor spread into a very small pieces as well. And also back to the August last year, I remember the case of a young soldier. He go to the forest by himself and then he stepped on one of these as well. And he died because of that one, because you know, no one knows about the explosion. So he died alone in the forest. We found his dead body 10 meters away. So which means that he crawling by his own hand and then he lost a lot of blood, so he died alone as well. Okay. But truly, we have four to six millions of landmines and bombs. 70% of them were already clear, 30% of them still remaining in Cambodia right now. And Cambodia, known as the number one country in the world right now, that has a highest rate of M2T per capita. Are there any um, organizations doing education programs, like you said about children playing with the, the mortar shells? Yes. Is there anybody in, doing? Uh, in our primary school textbook, we have um, a picture of every landmine and bomb, but the, the most common one, and to tell them as well. But somehow we also have our own organization, also have an education program as well. But somehow in the far away part, sometimes they live far away, so the education cannot reach them, yeah. so they still don't know what it is. It's that way. Yeah. yeah, so now no question about the sad part, so no more sad part for you as well. So now let's see the happy hero red all together. Okay. Hey, Ezron, you're licking me. Oh, you're so cute. There's a lot of sweat on me today. You can yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Don't fall off. He won't jump. No worries. You sure? Yeah. He looks like he's gonna. Oh, there you go. You found some more salt. He's afraid of the height. You can feel your little tail. You can oh. pet him. He's so cute. I don't want to mess up his nose. <laughs> you're so sweet. Did you say he worked in the field before and now he's, yes, and this now is like before retirement? Yes, and now he's quite retirement. old, he's quite yeah. old, so we take him from the field just for demonstration. Oh, he's done a great Maybe job. Maybe a, li a little bit more, three months or six months, he will be retired yeah. as well. Because Not he's quite old now. <laughs> yes. Okay, so remember about the safe path that I told you. Where is it now? Here is the safe path and over there is also another safe path. This is the block. So the rat will be working in this block as well. So in this block, we have two metal container. The first one, no TNT. The second one we have as well. Yeah, this one, no TNT at all. So this is the actual things that you will see in real life. It look the same the way that we do as well. So now we have three heroes that came out for you. These two young men here are the handler of the hero rat. They are our team. They are the hero because they risk their life and go to the minefield, save Cambodia from landmine and bomb. That one hero inside the box, his name is Glenn, a boy and four years old right now as well. So please don't touch him now because he get allergic from lotion and mosquito spray. Yes? Wow, they're big, eh? yeah. He's a big boy. Yeah. Yeah. You can see he likes to lick because he likes to lick the sweat, salty from the sweat. Have you seen the red this big? No? Uh, yeah, one time. Yeah, one time, but, but in I, Cambodia. I ran away. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Cambodia, the local red is much bigger than that one. Really? Yeah, the local one. If you live a little bit longer, you might see them. Go to work, it's the same. Sometimes they wake up, yeah, they, I don't want to go to work. It looks the same. They are like human as well. So normally in real life, everything that you will see will be much faster than this one because he's a little bit slow. So that's why we take him from the field to here. This is a demonstration and also it includes to the part of retraining them as well. If their performance starts to be better, we take them from here to the field back as well. You can see the, vis the whisker of him start to be faster and faster. If he smells anti-explosive powder, his whisker will be much more faster than that one. And like I told you before, in the first metal container that you can see, no TNT. So that's why he's no interaction toward that one as well. 
So now he's moving forward to another one with TNT explosive powder. Okay, Glenn. Stop raising your nose, boy. You're a good boy, come on. He needs to walk back and forth, back and forth as a grid line here. And the handler here, they take half of the meter step by step as well. Okay. So when he come here, he will scratch. He start to refreshing his sense of smell because there's many different sense of smell around him. He start to refresh. He start rolling around a little bit. Okay. So the handler notice he's touching the ground. He's scratching a little bit. They give the click sound to call him for food reward as well. So when he heard the click sound, he will come straight to the handler to get his food reward. So now we go back again to verify it again. He already touched that again, but we want him to scratch a little bit more. Yes, very good, Glenn. So now the handler notices the scratching. He gives a click sound to call Glenn for banana. He's a gentle boy, gentle man, yes. Good job, Glenn. <laughs> Good job, Glenn. My visit to Apopo was, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the highlights of my time in CM Reap. The groundbreaking work that this organisation does to help rid the world of landmines, finding tuberculosis, and rescuing people from natural disasters is unparalleled around the world. And if you would be interested in donating towards the organization, the best way to do that without going to the visitor's center yourself and having the wonderful tour guide that we had who was able to shed a lot of light on the situation but also bring some levity to the day to make it an interesting trip regardless of the very serious subject matter. She did a wonderful job. If you would be interested in donating, I will leave a link in the description for a way to donate to a popo directly. All of the money that goes into the visitor center does go back into funding, training these hero rats and dog teams around the world. <laughs>